More than 800 people packed Newcastle City Hall last night, hoping to hear some solutions to the problems facing the BHP and its Newcastle workforce. But no immediate answers could be given. Premier Rann, Federal Spokesman on Employment Mr Bob Hawke, ACTU President Mr Cliff Dolan and FIA Assistant Secretary Mr Harry Howell travelled to Newcastle to speak at the meeting. But the mood became agitated as members of the audience were refused permission to speak. The meeting was convened by the Newcastle City Council to discuss alternative employment for the 1,600 workers to be retrenched by the BHP in Newcastle. Unfortunately, this topic was rarely broached. Mr Rann claims the BHP acted inappropriately by announcing the retrenchments at this time. There is a groundswell of opinion that BHP has acted precipitately and it's to be hoped that the present uh, proceedings that are before Mr Justice Fisher uh, will result in some moratorium uh, because uh, it just seems that uh, BHP doesn't uh, yet have a plan for the future and people are being put out of work long before uh, any real decisions made as to what the management's determined for the rest of the 1980s. While Mr Hawke says federal government policies are to blame for the effects being felt because of the downturn in the steel industry, he says more federal government intervention is needed to alleviate the repercussions caused by the worldwide recession. Now this immediately calls into question and obviously does so the total inadequacies of the federal government's economic policies. The Assistant Secretary of the Federated Ironworkers Association, Mr Harry Hurrell, received a cool reception when he approached the roster. He called for profits in the BHP's oil and gas industries to be pumped back into the oil and steel industry. This was put to the vote. ended as it had begun, on a note of anger and frustration, but there was one bright spot, and that was the announcement by the Chairman of the Hunter Development Board, Mr Alex Shung, of the Newcastle City Council's job making plans. What was once the Wales Rescue Helicopter was flying for the first time today as the Westpac Rescue Helicopter. Same major sponsor, just a different name. Radio 2KO and NVN are also continuing their sponsorship of the craft. To mark its change of name, the helicopter is sporting new yellow and red paintwork. But Rescue Service Director Terry Mobile says nothing except the colouring has changed. The aircraft will be still available to uh, the emergency services in the community for exactly the same uh, type of work that it's been carrying out over the last eight years. Are you going to maintain this seven days a week, 24 hour service? Yes, we are. It's been very hard on our, uh, on our one pilot over the last uh, 12 months because of the high work rate, but uh, we're able to uh, utilise the two NBN pilots as backup and that'll uh, take a bit of workload off young Ian. For the flight passed over the city, the Westpac helicopter was accompanied by two RAAF Iroquois and the NBN helicopter. The choppers travelled south down the coast from Williamtown Raft Base to Redhead Beach. From Redhead they banked right and flew over the outer suburbs. Over Constile they turned again and headed up into the inner city. The flight path complete, one RAAF helicopter returned to base while the remaining Iroquois accompanied the Westpac helicopter for a landing at Fletcher Park near Newcastle Hospital. far back as 76, 77. Uh, they put it down to the fact that they didn't know and their public servants didn't tell them. But you mustn't blame the employees, you've got to blame the, the boss and they're the ministers and the, and the cabinet. Malcolm Fraser had a submission before his cabinet in 1978 about these matters and nothing was done. 
I think there's a fair bit of corruption also involved in this, and certainly it would appear that big names in the Liberal Party apparently have used their influence to guarantee that nothing was done about the matter. The amount of money involved is not just a few dollars, it runs into uh, perhaps uh, uh, hundreds of millions and perhaps thousands of millions of dollars. It's big money, and everybody else has had to pay more tax. If you look at the petrol levy, we've had to soak the average person another $13.3 billion in the last six years, that's the petrol tax levy, to make up for taxes that obviously weren't paid by others. What sort of taxation do you think is more fair, income tax or indirect taxes? Income tax is more fair if it's related to those who have the ability to pay, because if it's indirect tax on all items, that means the pensioner pays the same rate of tax as the millionaire. Old Brett Skelton of North Lambton was in a serious condition in Royal Newcastle Hospital, suffering from leg and internal injuries. Passengers ran the castle, also known as Royal Newcastle, was in a satisfactory condition with leg and head injuries. More than 300 cows and bulls were paraded before the judges at the Singleton showground. Most of the entrants were Frisians, but there were also classes for Jerseys, Illawarra Shorthorns, Guernseys and Ayshires. The Singleton show president, Mr Charlie Shearer, says the task of a dairy cattle judge is similar to that of a judge in a beauty contest. He says a productive dairy cow must be a good size, but it must be refined rather than beefy. It was Mr Shearer who took out the honours in today's judging. His Frisians, Wyoming Kemp Meg and Wyoming Meg Ned, were declared the supreme champion cow and bull. His prize animals certainly didn't appear to be suffering any ill effects as a result of the drought. However, Mr Shearer says the hunter's dairy industry, which is responsible for 28% of the state's production, is in danger if the drought continues. The Glenbourne Dam's only about 28% or 26% full. Uh, the irrigators have been given only 10% of their allocation and this is going to have a, a very, very serious effect on production because the dairy farmers rely on irrigation for their production and if there's no water there, we've got nothing to pump. So they're all praying for rain? My word we are. things I think Janelle that we will be concerned in is already happening and that's the uh, position with the BHP, the retrenchments and employment that is certainly going to grow in the district as a result of that. Uh, the council is very concerned and very uh, active in it as was seen in the rather unpleasant meeting that took place last week but uh, with the initiative of the Hunter Development Board and our participation in that and the decision that was made tonight to uh, carried further uh, on our own initiatives uh, will certainly be very, very involved in that 
with cooperation of our affiliates and other organisations which we are associated with, there certainly will be plans being laid to alleviate the problems as much as possible, to soften the burden for people who are unfortunately being affected in all of this, but uh, that's only one part of it. The uh, effect within our society here in Newcastle is going to be such that unless somebody really does address himself to it, uh, you know, it's going to be a very, very sad scene. And as uh about it that you don't like? Well, as far as the project is concerned, I am opposed to it because it only provides one third of the area for residential accommodation and two thirds for commercial and light industrial. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Newcastle needs more domiciliary area. And if they were to reverse the area and, call, and make two thirds residential, I'd be much more uh, pleased with the proposal. But we also need jobs for people too, don't we? Yeah, but you know, if we approve of this, what date are we going to get the bodies in there to be working there? You know, it's, it's not uh, this year or next year. It'll be another two or three years away at least. We want jobs now. Well, how are you going to arrange that? Well, I'm hoping, I've spoken to the Premier and I'm hoping to pursue that question. It was very good last week. There were some outstanding performances, namely by Gary Gilmore from Belmont and Eric Higgins from Hamilton Wickham, as well as Archie Lindstrom, a former second grade player, scored 100 for Stockton last week in first grade. What are a couple of the interesting matches for this weekend? I think the main game will be the Belmont Hamilton Wickham game. They, they both won comfortably last week. And the Waratah Mayfield Cardiff Bullaroo game, that was both victors last weekend. And Dennis, you've got a match coming up on Sunday, which is a possible versus probables uh, match, uh, two decided team to play England later on this month, and some certainly some uh, good talent in those two sides. It'll be an interesting trial, I think mainly from the bowling viewpoint, where there's a number of bowlers pressing for selection, and particularly Steve Hatherall and the spinners, and the uh, Glenn Davis in the fast bowling spot. Glenn last year didn't play, but it was in the cricket, and obviously he'll be trying to make the team against England. BHP is not yet saying how many people have accepted voluntary resignation. However, a spokesman did say that the company is quite pleased with the response. It won't be known until Monday at the earliest and probably even later in the week just what the final figure will be. And then retrenchments will have to take place to bring the total workforce at the Newcastle Steelworks down to 8,000. Those people retrenched will still be receiving the benefits of the severance agreement. That is, from one to one and a half weeks pay, depending on the length of service, for every year you've been there, up to a maximum of 26 weeks pay. The difference, though, is that you'll be told to go and not given a choice, and it will be last on the payroll, first off. Obviously, the company's intention was to make it advantageous for the longer-term employees to leave to keep jobs for younger people with greater commitments. But according to the Acting Assistant Secretary of the FIA, Mr John Lee, the company has not been generous enough. 
Had the carrot been juicier, more longer term employees, older people, would have taken it and far reduced the need for retrenchments, perhaps altogether. Mr Lee estimates that of the 1,734 to go this time around, 850 of them will be FIA members, the others being tradesmen, apprentices, trainees and staff. Had no metal workers offered to resign, Mr Lee estimated that all those with less than 22 months service would be sacked. He said that probably enough will go voluntarily to bring the cut-off figure down to 16 months on the payroll, and those people will go within the next three months. The 1982 Oktoberfest was a washout today. Volunteer members from the Germania Club ploughed their way through mud this morning, equipped with shovels and wheelbarrows. Eventually they managed to make the festival waterproof. This year's show was a bit of a disappointment to the organisers. We are disappointed because a lot of effort went in, a lot of planning, and uh, we're lucky now to break even. It costs us a lot of money to put the show on. In true German style, today's crowd found a way to overcome the difficulties and get on with the celebrations. Last night's rain didn't deter those in the festive mood. In fact, it just created more fun. There was a new attraction last night here, mud wrestling. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think, um, well, I, don't, I don't think we should repeat this tonight, but uh, I think it'll be more cleaner fun, dancing and singing. Meanwhile, at Rathmines today, Apex members were hard at it discussing this year's program at the annual Tent City Convention, which in some cases was levelled by the weather. Despite the weather, we've had a great weekend. I think the rain has brought us all together because there's been a restriction on what we can do, so consequently we do it all together. And do it all together they did, even if the activities got a little out of hand. More than 500 Apex members from Zone 10 were involved in the convention this weekend. They adopted a new motto, a life to be lived, and that's exactly what they did today. Brass and concert bands were at their best today for the New South Wales. Well, <laughs>